once again to our show that is called Real Shame. It's a show where we watch movies from our movie list of shame or movie blind spots. Basically movies that we haven't seen and that we're watching and you're watching us after we've watched them and we're talking about them. And I think that's the order we do things. I'm Adam. I'm Andy. Uh, this week we're watching some movies from my list of shame and to kick the week off and talk about that first movie, I'm going to pass it over to Andy. What are we talking about? All right, two friends are robbed when they go out to a posh club. And now they have to find a wallet that was stolen from one of them, which contains a winning lottery ticket in Uptown Saturday Night. We're looking for Sharp Eye Washington. Who are we looking for him? Uh, Steve Jackson, and this is my friend Wardell Franklin. We want him for a job. What kind of job? Well, some property ours was stolen. We want him to get it back for us. Cost you $500. Five hundred? Oh, we ain't got that kind of money. Four hundred dollars? I think we don't have to go today. How about three hundred? You sure you Sharp Eye Washington, the private detective? Yeah, I'm Sharp Eye Washington, the one and only. Never be another like me. Yeah, well, see, man, we're working people. See, I drive a taxi cab, and I mean, like, three hundred dollars, man. Man. You don't know what it's like to be a private detective. It's rough. There's people looking for me now. Who? None of your business, who? Just make up your mind, because I got a split. How about $200? So Uptown Saturday Night was directed by esteemed actor who we, we unfortunately we lost last year, Sidney Poitier. Right. Sidney Poitier, obviously longtime actor, was in a lot of great classic films, but uh, continued acting, but also transitioned over into directing, actually in the 1970s. Uh, this was his third film, if I'm not mistaken, third directorial effort. He'd done a couple of, couple of movies, obviously this is his third, couple of movies before this. I was going to say, I think his first film was two years prior to this, in 1972. It's written by Richard Wesley. Richard Wesley wrote a, a couple of other movies that Sidney Poitier directed, one of which we'll be talking about on Wednesday. But he also wrote a movie that Sidney Poitier did in the 80s called Fast Forward, oh. which is like a, a dance kind of movie. Ooh, so that sounds it's, fun. It's kind of fun. Uh, Sidney Poitier stars in this film as Steve Jackson. Bill Cosby stars as Wardell Franklin. Rosalind Cash plays Sidney Poitier's character's wife, Sarah Jackson. Keddie Lester plays Bill Cosby's character's wife, Irma Franklin. Flip Wilson has a small role as the Reverend. Richard Pryor has an even smaller role as Sharp Eye Washington. Yeah, you better keep a sharp eye to catch him. Uh, yeah, he's, he's not in it a whole lot. Pa uh, Paula Kelly plays Leggy Peggy. Roscoe Lee Brown plays her husband, Chesley Lincoln. And Calvin Lockhart plays Silky Slim. And finally, Harry Belafonte, doing, I guess, somewhat of a Don Corleone godfather yeah. impersonation, plays Geechee Dan Buford. So Sidney Poitier had worked with Harry Belafonte on the first movie that Sidney Poitier directed called Buck and the Preacher. It stars the two of them. So they right. had worked together before. Uh, this is a movie that you've never seen, but I've also never seen. All right. So I'm, I'm going into this one uh, blind just like you are. You're but pulling to me. Because, yeah, because it is your week, you get to tell us what did you know, if anything, about Uptown Saturday Night before going into it, and what... It, was it a good time going uptown Saturday right. night, or was it a bad time? I will let you know. Uh, I knew nothing about this movie. Uh, I think that's pretty much what I always say on these things. <laughs> I usually, you, you you know, it's not hard to pick ones from my list of shame, but you, you seem to sometimes pick the, the lesser known, the heartily seen, and all that kind of stuff. Although, I don't know. This movie could have been a big hit in 74. Who knows? I wasn't. I, I don't know. I, I mean, what I was going to say, I, I, I don't know many people that have heard of this. Yeah. And it doesn't have a Blu-ray release or anything like that. So, yeah. Yeah. So, I was going into this. It was, you know, obviously, you've heard of Sidney Poitier, heard of Bill Cosby and all that kind of stuff. So, I didn't know what I was going to get into because I always think of Sidney Poitier as like a, uh, like a drag actor and stuff like that. And don't really think of him as very comedic. Again, yeah, was, right, was yeah. He in, very dramatic. Was he in Guess Who's Coming to Dinner? Mm -hmm. Was that a comedy? I've never seen it. Not really. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No. Because really. I always think of like, you know, they call me Mr. Tibbs. And, oh, yeah, yeah. He, yeah, he, yeah. I mean, he's always playing serious, dramatic roles. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, it, so I will say, before I talk about how I felt about the movie, it was odd for me to see him in this kind of role. Like, he's kind of, he doesn't really actually play the straight man. I would say almost... 
in uh in this movie bill cosby plays it more straight than he does like he's kind of goofier and wackier and it's just it's odd for me to kind of see him in that that kind of role or see him that way and i think actually in wednesdays not to spoil wednesdays he's probably a little bit more comedic in that movie too but it, it's just it's just it's just odd seeing him in a uh, in a comedy movie that it was really, it kind of threw me for a loop the whole time. Um, I'll say ultimately this movie didn't really do a whole lot for me. It, it's, um, it starts out like very like, uh, I don't want to say like somber, but it starts out like very low and very like serious. It all actually kind of remind me the intro kind of remind me the intro and like earthquake and stuff like that, where he's like in the kitchen talking, you have the phone there and all that kind of mm. stuff. It felt very like, almost sitcom me, but it felt very dramatic. And then it kind of escalated from there. Um, and it just wasn't zany enough for me to feel, for me to laugh or think of it like as a comedy. Like it wasn't, it just felt like a little bit, what was the movie we watched? Was it either Superfly where um, it also involved like a robbery and it had like kind of a, like a gang kind of thing that I thought felt like was very similar to this movie. Was it Superfly or the movie we paired with it? Ooh, I don't, I don't know. Okay. I don't remember. Cause I felt it might like, have been Shaft or Superfly. I'm not sure. Yeah. I just felt like it, 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 yeah, maybe it was Shaft. It felt like we kind of seen a movie that was very similar to this. That was a little bit, maybe more serious, more actiony, but this movie is like a little bit elevated, but not like super goofy, zany comedy. You know, like, I, I, you know, Bill Cosby's making faces and doing that stuff. And Sidney Poitier is kind of making faces. But it just doesn't feel, like, super funny to me. So I think ultimately this movie just really didn't didn't work for me overall. It, just, it wasn't as funny. It wasn't as crazy. It wasn't as zany and all that kind of stuff. So unfortunately for me, it just really didn't hit. So I, I, didn't, I didn't get a whole lot of enjoyment out of watching it. I didn't get a whole lot out of the movie because I was trying to wrestle with its tone because I felt like its tone felt off for me, you know, while watching it. Right. So that's kind of where I fell on Uptown Saturday Night. Um, you haven't seen it before. Did you, what did you know about going into it? And did you feel the same way I did? Did it work for you or did it not work for you? Yeah. So I, I, I didn't know much about it either. I didn't know what the plot was or anything like that. I only knew and, and, and continue to know that Sidney Poitier and Bill Cosby did three movies in the 1970s. And I, I, I believe Sidney Poitier directed all three of them. Uh, but I didn't know what any of them were about. I mean, yeah. I, I knew they were all comedies. I didn't know what any of them were about. So I, I went into this fairly blind other than knowing that Sidney Poitier and Bill, Bill Cosby were in it. And I feel like you, I mean, I, I, this movie is just not very funny. Yeah. I, I, I mean, much of it was just flat. I mean, I, I laughed at a few parts, but for the most part, it was, it was laugh free. And that's, yeah. that kind of pains me to say, but it's, it's true. Sidney Poitier, I love Sidney Poitier, but he's, he's not very funny, you know? Yeah. And, and I mean, I think even when he's trying to be funny, he's not very funny. No. Uh, you know, there's a reason why he's such a great dramatic actor and not a comedic actor. Yeah. Um, so unfortunately he didn't do it very well for me. Uh, Bill Cosby, you know, I, we all know Bill Cosby outside of the movies and stuff. We're not yeah. really here to talk about that. So I, I, I won't, I won't say anything about that. But, you know, I, I tried to separate the, the art from the artist and all that. And I think I did a reasonable job in this case. But I, st I just didn't find Bill Cosby funny. You know, right. and it's not, not from anything that has to do with this, you know, what happened to him in real life, his personal life, uh, what a creep he is. But just, I didn't think it was very funny. It, to me, it was like, nowadays I complain about how they let, you know, Seth Rogen or Will Ferrell, somebody just riff. And a lot of it just is not funny to me. It's funny. Yeah. It's, it's funny to other people. It's not really funny to me. I feel like a lot of this movie, they were like, "All right, Bill, just be funny. Just like, do your just, thing. all right, we're we're rolling. Just just like do, you do your shtick or whatever." And so he's like, "Well, you see, blah blah blah." You know, and I was like, it, "It's just, it just was not funny. Most yeah. of that was not funny." Uh, so unfortunately, I just yeah, I, I was not really into this movie uh, either. Um, it, it, you know, they would they would have like a a scene where I thought they were going to get things going. You know, yeah. Richard Pryor comes in and, you know, he has, a, but then it's just, it's just like, mm. the flats. Yeah. and then it's like, okay, we're going to try and give it some life here. Okay. No. And it just, it just goes that way. It fits and starts the, the whole movie. And overall, it's just not a very funny comedy. Yeah. Unfortunately, even Harry Belafonte doing his, uh, he's, he's got like veins popping yeah, on his yeah. forehead. He's like, you know, or whatever. Uh, just, it wasn't all that funny. 
Yeah, I agree. And the interesting thing, too, with both these movies that we're doing this week is it felt like they kind of had the same formula where it felt like the movie kind of came to an end, like about the hour, maybe 45 minute mark. And then they kind of repeated that last, you know, the 45 minutes into it again for the next 45 minutes after. Like, mm-hmm. it's like we do one thing and then we go back and we do it again. Yeah. I, I, especially the next one because it's in the title. Yeah. And I was just like, we've kind of already seen this. Like, I, I'm over this already and kind of yeah. stuff like that. So, <laughs> yeah, I wish I could have. I really wanted to, like, you know, like everything. I want to like these movies and stuff like that. And, it, and it, it's kind of, it's not fun to sit here and be like, I didn't like it, all that kind of stuff. But yeah, this movie is just, I I, I didn't get it. I don't, I don't, it wasn't very funny for me either. Yeah, I I was really hoping that it would be, you know, some undiscovered hilarious gem. Yeah. But it's just, it's not. Um, And so Rosalind Cash, who plays Cindy Poitier's wife, I've seen her in in quite a few things. But one of the things that uh, I remember her being in is The Omega Man with with Charlton Heston. Um, And, I bring I bring her up because I don't really know who the lady who plays Bill Cosby's wife, Katie Lester. But Rosalind Cash and Katie Lester, both of them are kind of the wives. And I feel like they don't have much to do in the movie other than they're just there every now and then yeah. or whatever. And uh, apparently they, they sort of tried to rectify that with the movie that we're going to talk about on Wednesday. Um, so anyway, I just I throw that out there. Uh, also, Flip Wilson, who plays the Reverend. Flip Wilson was a very well-known comedian. But I think he... He's very believable as a reverend. <laughs> yeah, I thought I thought he did a good job. Richard Pryor, I think, is good in the small little role that he it's, has as the private detective. It's weird, like because I always think of him as so thin, mm-hmm. and he's kind of like his face was really puffy in this movie. Like he seems a little <laughs> maybe chunky. he was doing some drugs. Yeah, probably, uh, probably because uh, because this was back when he was still doing his in his drug phase, which which you know later he would quit after he like set himself on fire, or whatever. But uh, yeah, I don't know. Maybe maybe it was a drug thing. I'm not I'm not sure. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, this this movie is just yeah, yeah. It's a it's not a great. Skip it unless not, you're a complete uh, yeah. Sydney Poitier completist. Yeah, not not great. Uh, as I mentioned, it has no uh, Blu-ray release, uh, which you know I'm not saying it. I'm not saying it shouldn't. You know, obviously there are pe- people that are fans of this film, but yeah, doesn't have doesn't have any. No, no, actually, none of the movies that Sydney Poitier directed that both he and Bill Cosby are in. None of them. The three. They don't have a Blu-ray release, so it's DVD only if you want to watch this movie. That's right, ladies. Uh, it is 67% fresh on Rotten Tomatoes, wow. but again, I don't know how many critics there, there were yeah. that scored that. 80% audience. Whoa. I did not find a Siskel and Ebert review. I did, well, Wikipedia lists has Siskel's review. They had like some quotes from him and said that he gave it three out of four stars. So I'll take their word for it. I don't know why you would make that up. So Siskel apparently gave it three out of four stars. I will say, I think Roger Ebert is favorable on this film or was favorable on this film because of the movie we're going to talk about Wednesday, which I'll just go ahead and say it. It's the the next, the, the second of the three movies that they did. He, I did find a review of that movie, and he mentions this movie, and he's he mentions it in a favorable way. Gotcha. So let's just say Cisco and Ebert gave Uptown Saturday Night two thumbs up. Leonard Maltin gives it two and a half stars. All right. Well, that was Uptown Saturday Night. On these Monday episodes, we like to talk about what we've been watching. Uh, I'm going to toss it over to you again. What have you been watching? Yeah, so uh, short turnaround from the last time we filmed. Didn't That's have right. a, a whole lot of time to watch a movie, so I'm only going to mention one movie. I actually watched it last night when I got home. It was a little bit, no, it was a little bit late, maybe 10 p.m. or something like that. So I didn't want to watch something that was like super long. Uh, So I was like, okay, I'm going to find something. Irishman. No, (laughs) God, no. Uh, I was like, I'm going to find something that's, you know, like 90 minutes tops. So I'm like looking through, and I didn't really want to watch anything serious or heavy, like dramatic or anything like that, because I, I feel like I, I, I just watched White Noise and, and The Menu not, not long before that, a couple of days before that. So I was like, I just want to watch something that I don't have to think about, yeah. comedy or, or whatever. And I was scrolling through Hulu, and I watched uh, Empire Records. Love that movie. Which is like 90 minutes, right? So Love it's it. perfect. You know, have don't, you don't seen really it before, to, right? I have, but I the last time I saw it was probably on VHS in like 1996. Great music. So uh, that's the last time that I've seen it. And yeah, no, I agree with you. I mean, I, I, I had the soundtrack, the CD yeah. soundtrack from back in the day. I probably still have it. Um, but it's been a long, long time since I've seen it. It's not a movie you really have to think about, but it's fun. 
Uh, it's just a hangout movie, pretty much. Uh, you can go listen to all this 90s music and see 90s Ethan Embry and 90s Liv Tyler and 90s Rory Cochran and all these people. So, yeah, I mean, I had fun with it. And again, it was a nice kind of relaxing movie to watch. It was just what the doctor ordered. I was like, I don't want to watch something where I'm going to, like, got to think. I got to be serious or I got to, you know, absorb some serious yeah. material. It fit the bill perfectly. So that's what I watched and I was happy to do it. Awesome. What about you? So, in preparing for some movies we're going to be reviewing in the next few weeks, I watched a movie that has a star from it that I've heard of about before, but I've never seen, and that was Brewster's Millions. Have you, you've you probably seen this before. I I don't know if I've ever seen it all the way through. Okay. I, I'm, I'm sure I've seen parts of it, if nothing else, on TV, but I, I'd be hard-pressed to tell you I've actually seen it all the way through. Okay. I don't know. So it's, it's an interesting movie. I It's not very funny, I don't think. I mean, I, they try to put it in, in him in funny situations, and it's supposed to be like a whole, maybe like comedy of errors kind of thing. And because like the premise is that in order to her- inherit this Three hundred million dollars. He has to spend thirty million dollars in thirty days and not tell anyone why he's doing it. And at the end of those thirty days, he can't have anything to show for it, so he can't invest it or squander it away or or buy anything and keep it. It's all got to be, you know, tr- uh, was it? Uh, I was going to say transactional. I guess it can't last for more than thirty days. Uh, so you know, he's he's doing zany things with it and all that kind of stuff. And there's some clever things he does with it that I like. Uh, like he. You know, spoiler for it a little bit. It's like he buys a rare postage stamp for lots of money and then uses it as a regular postage stamp, <laughs> which is smart, right? Yeah, yeah. And does stuff like that. But then he does some really stupid things. And ultimately, I think anyone in the shoes are like, how would I do it? And I'm like, I could do this way better. Like, I could do it smarter, way better. And that, and, and that's kind of where it doesn't really hold up as much. Because I, I would think it would be more fun if you're like, Oh yeah, yeah. That's what exactly what I do. Yeah, that's the smart way of doing it. And then that explodes and blows up in the face and doesn't really work out the way you intended. And that's where the comedy comes from, rather than like, yeah, that's not a that's not a smart choice. Why are you doing it that way and stuff like that? Yeah. And I, the last thing is, and probably put more thought in Brewster's Millions than anyone else <laughs> uh, has, is like they're like you have to pay a fair price for these labor, or they say something like you have to pay pay a fair price for for the services you get. But he's like, you, I'll pay you $3 million to be my security guard. I'm like, what security guard makes $3 million in it for a month? You know Sign what I mean? Me up. Yeah, so it's like, it's like, I don't think they really like follow the rules they lay out in the movie and yeah. stuff like that. So that, that kind of caught me as odd. And I, I, I think this movie is, re- is ripe for a remake. Like, I feel like it's, and I've, isn't yeah. this already a remake? Sounds like it. Uh, I think it is. Yeah, it's a remake of another yeah. movie. I feel like this is like, it's right for it. Like, I think it's enough times pass. It's just one of those movies that they can probably do a remake. And, you know, instead of Aquafina. being... Aquafina. Aquafina. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Aquafina. And, yeah. And, uh, um, yeah. It'd be great. Aquafina and Rebel Wilson. And I was thinking, um, what's her... Uh, yeah. From Night School. Uh, the lady. Uh, uh, Tiffany Haddish? T- Tiffany Haddish. There yeah. you go. They got to spend, all three of them got to spend $30 million and then they all inherit money. Who knows? <laughs> uh, so that's Bruce's Millions. It was cool to watch and see in this movie, but ultimately it's a, it's okay. It, was, it wasn't a bad time waste. The other movie I watched, and I'm kind of starting to catch up on movies that I missed last year that have made critics and people I follow's top 10 lists and stuff like that and try to catch up with it. So a movie I, I'm watching, I watched, is one that made someone's top 10 list. And it was a movie I kind of played off, or I, I really didn't give a second thought about when it came out. And I was like, okay, this movie happened. It's probably not very good or anything like that. But then it made like number six or number seven on this guy's top 10 list of the year. And I'm like, whoa, well, maybe I should give this movie another shot. And it's the movie called Unbe- The Unbearable Weight of Massive Talent. It's the uh, Nicolas Cage uh, movie where he plays himself or a version of himself. Apparently, the character he plays is Nick Cage, N-I-C-K Cage. And in real life, he's N-I-C Cage, Nick Cage. Hmm. So that's his distinguishing, how he distinguishes between whatever him and the movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> whatever he gets a little pedantic with it. Yeah. Uh, this movie's like 80% on Rotten Tomatoes. And... 
I don't get it at all. Like, I really don't get it. It's, I didn't find it funny. Maybe this whole week I'm just not finding comedies very funny because that's what we were watching this week. Maybe I'm just, I don't know. I have a, I'm, I have a, I'm just sour. I think you're harsher on comedies than, than me. Probably. Honestly. Maybe. Oh, that's interesting. I'll have to think about that. Uh, yeah. I, well, I think I find a lot of stuff, a lot of of stuff funnier than than you do you know, yeah that wasn't funny at all and i'm like oh i was i was rolling in the aisles yeah i'm just a dour individual in case you can't tell <laughs> uh it i don't it just it wasn't again it wasn't it wasn't zany i want to say it wasn't zany enough but there's parts in this movie that are just weird and off the wall and you're like that's a choice okay they're doing that and then they're like, oh wait, this is this is a recurring thing. This is not a once in a once thing or something like that. Like this is constantly happening through the movie. Okay, uh, but it just, I don't know. It just didn't like work for me. It wasn't really that funny. It wasn't that crazy or that off the top. Like I felt like they could have done more. Like they could have plussed it. It could have been crazier. It could have been more insane. And it really wasn't. Um, and the movie has this very like meta thing that is doing where the movie so in the movie uh well part of the movie is like him and um the character's name is javi the actor is uh pedro, the, pedro, pedro pascal. pascal right yeah thank you uh they, they 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 decide to write a script together and the script is about this this budding friendship between two unlikely people and then because they want the oh. script to become Hollywood eyes and popular, they have to add all these stuff in. And, uh, you know, spoiler alert, the, the stuff they're talking about is basically the script that we're watching that they made the movie out of and stuff like that. Yeah. So it's like this meta textual thing of how maybe the script was developed or how the writer felt like the script had to be developed to be sold and all this kind of stuff. And that didn't really work for me either. So I, th- so that was just like, okay, yeah, I guess they're doing this too. So I don't see it. Uh, the guy, the critic that I that I listened to that liked it, the thing he liked the most about it was that it was like these two guys that were kind of building a friendship and all that kind of stuff. So I, yeah, I just I don't know. It just didn't didn't really work for me. It wasn't laugh out loud funny. It wasn't that crazy. I I, I wanted more. I felt like they could have done a whole lot more. Like they could have been really over the top with it, and they kind of weren't. Yeah. It was actually very, um, it was actually, le- you know, it was, it was very like mellow compared to how, how could it, how crazy it could have been. So that was kind of, I don't know, disappointing, I guess a little bit. Yeah. So yeah, that's what I've been watching a uh, Brewster's millions and the unbearable weight of massive talent. Cool. All right. So we've watched a movie directed by Sidney Poitier written by Richard Wesley starring Sidney Poitier and Bill Cosby. You already told them what the movie we're going to follow up with, but if you weren't listening, we're going to tell you that again. What did you decide to pair it with? Yeah, so they did, Bill Cosby and Sidney Poitier did the three movies in the 1970s. Uh, we only do two episodes in a week, so I just went with the second movie that That's they right. did. It's not a sequel, although they are also, you know, so they, they have different character names. Their wives are different, uh, but, you know, it's still Sidney Poitier and Bill Cosby doing crazy things. That's right. And it's called Let's Do It Again. came out one year after Uptown Saturday Night. So we'll talk about that on Wednesday. All right. Yes. Stay tuned Wednesday when we do that. Please like, subscribe, share, do all the social media stuff. Uh, it really just helps spread the word of the show. We do appreciate it. Let us know your thoughts on Uptown Saturday Night below if you're watching us on YouTube. We'll be curious to see that. Did you know about this movie? Is it an underrated gem? Did we just not get it? Or do you agree with us? Let us know. And then we're going to do this again on Wednesday. So stay tuned for that. And we'll see you soon, guys. Have a good one. Bye.